Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Twitch.tv forward slash Ice Cream My name is Graham Day, and this man right here is the man that we call Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake, it's been a while since I've heard that, to be fair. So, Bobby? GG, I've not seen it for the last four weeks. No, I have a long we've been locked down for. I switched to. Uh, we have. We, you guys don't get to see it because it's pre going live but basically when me and baby jump in uh discord we make sure everything's uh mm. all cleared like changing stream titles uh getting the the go live tweets ready make sure we've got all the articles and stuff i say we baby does pretty much all of that cause, cause it's, <laughs> yeah but to be fair you've got the you've got the the processing power on your side because you're outputting the stream you need to make sure that i look prettier then i mean it's, it's an hard job fair enough <laughs> it's a bit of graft but uh you know i mean you've got all that side i just do you know the yeah. social side to of it to be fair i have i have quite a few filters on bibby's camera purely just to hold in the raw animal magnetism if we gave you one filtered bibby i mean you're not looking at anything else basically you'd be sat there just watching on-demand scoop videos for the i mean, I mean we, we want that but we just want you to live live your full lives so so yeah that's what it is live uh, your full lives <laughs> uh but yes i was uh there was kind of a little bit of a stall then because i looked over at bib uh, and for those of you that might have seen, we have a double scoop day today. So we are live right now. Thank you for the ice cream. Hey, Lazar. Good morning. Lazar is believing. Thank you for the host. Very much appreciate it. <laughs> Lazar is believing. Bye, Lazar. Um, so, yeah, we have a double scoop day. First time ever. First time ever double scoop day. We were planning to go live tomorrow um, to give you content on Bank Holiday Friday. However, uh, we had requests to cover the Xbox inside uh, Xbox conference that's happening at 4 p.m. UK time today. We had requests to cover that live. So rather than doing a scoop tomorrow morning, we're going to give you a double scoop day and give you a Friday off. So you still get you'll still get your two scoops if you can't join us live at 4 p.m. tonight. But just just listen on demand for the uh, to the um, the Xbox inside conference scoop tomorrow. You'd have to listen to it. You listen tomorrow. That's fine. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Uh, so yes. Anyway, uh, as we were coming live, then I looked over at Bibby's screen and I still had him like minimized and had like an inside Xbox logo, like Xbox Series X enhanced kind of things. Like ah, click, click. So then I came on and was like, "Hi, welcome." <laughs> uh, you should have heard the little girl on the screen. That was like. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Also, you wouldn't have heard it as well when there was about 10 seconds left. For those of you that watched the intro, there's a bit, uh, we might have mentioned it as well, we kind of s say them out loud. The bit where Bibby goes, oh, is that the liquor? Oh, oh. But, and it's kind of, that's it. But however, when you're listening to it five times a week, every week, you suddenly start building it up in your head. So whenever that comes on, it's like, is that the liquor? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> So as that bit was going along, I'm thinking must mock Bib, but but need to get my tweet out. So I'm starting to get, like bashing my keyboard uh, to get my live tweet out, which still isn't out. So I will put that out when we start going through the uh, the content. But yes, yes, double scoop day, first time ever, ladies and gentlemen. We didn't want to we didn't want to let you have just four scoops this week, so we've got you five, um, and you get you get a bank holiday lion. So wins all round, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've already got my bottle of rosé in the fridge. You know what I mean? You gotta get it prepared. Gotta get it cold, mate. You've got you've got alcohol in the fridge. You absolutely yes. heathen. I mean, I, I have no idea what what that, <laughs> what that would look like to, to me. Oh, yeah, there's a bottle of uh, gin, a bottle of amaretto, another bottle of, <laughs> amaretto, another bottle of gin. <laughs> Uh, yeah. This originally, this was a productive fridge. This had like the energy that you need. It had um, uh, coke in there, just to give you a little bit of a buzz. It had cold coffees in there, and now, yeah, it's I mean lockdown fridge. It's absolutely just get off the tits. That's what it is. <laughs> but it works, so why not? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm gonna switch scenes once. Let's go to the split screen. Um, we have had requests from people. We we thought we just we just ignore it but obviously you can see here it says graham's home and then over there it says icu studio baby's in the icu studio and we keep saying uh, we keep having people say why does it say he's in the studio and he's not he's at home and um, the reason for that is because that isn't a still image um so usually on all our other overlays i can move bits around whereas this um if you see it every now and then you go see it, and now watch it baby side of the screen in a second you'll see like a, a little glow goes across where it says icu studio there we go wow um the reason that happens is because it's an MP4 file, a video overlay. Um, so yeah, long story short, I can't edit that without editing the video file, and, and yeah, we need our designer to do that and so on. But anyway, because of because of the requests, we have put effort in, so we will have that same Bibby's home at some point 
uh, probably the start of next week. So there you go. You request and it happens. I mean, we yeah, should, man. Should have done it before, but you know, you know, it is what it is. Well, I, I mean, I'm putting this apology out to Alpi because he's the only one that's well, he's the one that complains directly to me, saying that he's doing his head in. So I apologise, Alpi. Uh, we had Mad, uh, Mad in the chat as well yesterday when we were pre-stream saying. It's funny because because it says ICU studio, but it looks like Bibby's home. I was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it'll be done. Uh, Rose Mike's on the navy room tonight. Oh, good lad, good lad, good lad. Uh, Not for me that I'll be on my ass. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, I, I think actually, I think I can do rum. I think I'm okay with rum. Um, but I can do white rum. I've got a coconut one that I brought back from Jamaica, which is. I've also got that run. It's as Samantha shouts from the toilet. Um, yeah, so I've got dark rum and white rum, but the white rum for me She's is the way it's from. She's got white rum in the toilet. <laughs> She's got white rum in the toilet, mate. You know what? Lockdown does uh, does weird things to people. So we've got a couple. We've got a towel rack in there. It's just full of beer at the moment. <laughs> I mean, there's me thinking I was bad with streamer fridge. You've got streamer bog. <laughs> <laughs> Good lad. I mean, okay, make a note. I'll <laughs> There you go. There's a, there's, a, there's a crude joke in there somewhere, but I'm not going to be that guy that gets cut, uh, gets clipped and then put on social media for being sexist, don't so I'll just leave it. that one there. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, Laza, if a new Assassin's Creed was coming up, including myself as the main character, what do you reckon the slogan would be? Uh, I've got it. I've got it already. I don't even need to think about it. Slaying is believing. The blade is ours. <laughs> Mine's better. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've overruled. Slaying is believing. Slaying is believing. I actually, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. There's no other option. <laughs> uh, but anyway, 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 decent, decent intro, decent intro. But for those of you that don't know, as mentioned, my name is Graham Day. This is the man that we call Bibby. And together we are part of the ice cream team. This is the scoop, which is named because, you know, it means new scoop and also ice cream things. You know, that's the joke. We made it on purpose. Anyway, 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 you get it. You get it. I know you get it. Sorry. Chill out. Calm down. Anyway, we are bringing you the scoop, which is the UK's number one video games podcast even if we do say so ourselves and we bring you the biggest the best and the breaking news stories from the world of video games your daily dose of breaking games news we give you our thoughts and impressions on the news stories and want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions so we can create a little bit of a backwards and forwards and if you are live with us on twitch it's now 11 i usually say 10 a.m ish but it's a little bit late today because we were tinkering <laughs> of course it's a double well, scoop day that's what the ish is there for me it's a disclaimer <laughs> i mean to be fair we did go live when it was 10 ish so so yeah there we go it's fine it's all good uh, so yeah, we go live each and every single weekday, usually at 10 a.m. ish. Uh, we won't be going live tomorrow morning though because we are double scooping today. So make sure you set your alarms for 4 p.m. tonight. If not, if you don't want to set any alarms, if you don't have an alarm, just hit follow right now on Twitch and you'll get notified when we go live. But if you are here and if you are here later on, make sure you do get involved in the chat like Mike has, like Bacon Chin has, like Laza has. Feel free to get involved because we turn this into an on-demand video podcast that we upload to YouTube and then an audio podcast that goes on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud and Google Play. So if you get involved in the chat right now, you, you get involved cream. in the on-demand video and the on-demand audio podcasts. And Mike has just done that by hitting the host button on the channel. Thanks, Mike. Very much appreciated. Uh, the scoop is available on Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. Good lad, Lazar. Yes, he knows. He knows the script. He knows the script. Uh, so, we sh should we jump in? Should we jump in? Uh, I think we should. I think we should. Uh, so, I mean, buckle, buckle up. S settle yourselves down. This is a bit of a surprise to start things off. You probably weren't expecting this, but you know what? Let's, let's... Okay, I'll reveal it. Stadia's wireless controllers can now finally be wireless. Bah! <laughs> <laughs> this is the big news of the day. <laughs> uh, Can you believe it? So, yeah, written by Mike Fahe from Kotaku UK. Stadia's wireless controllers can finally connect to PC wirelessly. Google Stadia launched back in November with a wireless controller that could connect that could only connect wirelessly to a Chromecast Ultra. Playing on a PC or a laptop required a USB connection. An update to the controllers rolled out this week, allowing them to connect to wireless uh, uh, connect wirelessly to any browser-based Stadia client. The Stadia controller is an odd beast. Standard wireless controllers, including Xbox One and PS4 controllers, have no problem connecting to PC or mobile hardware. I've been using my Xbox One wireless controller to play, uh, to play Stadia games since launch without any problems. The Stadia controller is not a standard wireless controller. It could not connect wireless to my laptop, which is why it's been in its box since November. GG. Um, 
This week's Stadia controller update changes that now. Players can use their mobile uh, Stadia app to update their controller's firmware, allowing it to connect to their browser-based uh, client using their wireless internet connection. Once updated, players can hold down the Stadia controller's link button, enter an on-screen code, and play Stadia games wirelessly until their battery dies. Note that uh, they can only play Stadia games wirelessly. The controller connects directly to the app via Wi-Fi. It's not a Bluetooth device, and it won't control games wirelessly outside of Stadia. Uh, Stadia. Ultimately, users are still better off just using a standard wireless PC controller, which works with anything. But hey, since it's nice to have a wireless controller that works wi uh, wireless, uh, blah, blah, but hey, it's nice to have a wireless controller that works wirelessly. Finally, says Mike Fahey. Right mm. <clears throat> I mean, what a story! What an angle! I mean, who'd have called it? Who'd have called it? I mean, the, the thing that annoys me the most now about this is the controller itself, a Stadia controller, for me, is it's the perfect weight. It fits in my massive hands nicely. The triggers are beautiful. The buttons are beautiful. The whole controller itself is a damn fine controller. I just don't understand why it's had so many problems. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like Being able to use a wireless controller wirelessly should be... It, I mean, this just shows overall the difficulties that Stadia have had adapting to uh, the, the current J current gaming uh, life cycle. It's, it should be the most simplest of things. The clue is in the name. It's a wireless controller. If it's only wireless to play with your Google Chrome, when you said that you can use it on, uh, on your mobile phone or your PC uh, straight out of the box, you're in, you're in big signs of trouble there. So... It's, it's good again in credit where credit's due. The, the, the getting the stuff out eventually in drips and drabs, but it, for, it's still not good enough. And you can't use it away from using the app, which is a big problem as well. Because surely that'll have some sort of latency issue if you're using your app and then to your PC. A three way connection isn't the best, is it? To be yeah. able to use the controller inputs. Yeah, that, that, that's the thing. I mean,. <clears throat> When you think, oh, I'm just pairing to an app. That, oh, I've, not, I've written the discussion now, but I didn't actually put it live. Derp. There we go. Stadia's wireless controller. Although I've put the asterisk rather than the quote marks because I wanted to emphasize it. Um, yeah, I, I just don't, I just don't understand the thought process. It shows you once again. What, what's this? It's a controller. Is it wireless? Yes. Can you use it without the wires though. Well, well, no. Well, in that essence, then, um, my TV's wireless. Uh, I mean, you, st you still need the power lead uh, to actually use it, but if you take the power lead off, it's wireless. That's kind of the same thing with that. If you don't have it plugged in, then it doesn't work. It's the same thing with my TV. My wireless TV! I mean, I, my TV is actually wireless, yeah, but that's kind of not the point. My old CRT TVs that I had in the mid-90s, the big mega ones, yeah, they were all wireless because, you know, if you, if you unplug the wires, it didn't have a wire in it. Jobs good. That's kind of what they're saying, which is baffling. But, the, yeah, the fact that you can now use it wirelessly, it's not wireless, it's not using bluetooth it's wirelessly connecting to your laptop using a specific app to put your inputs from your controller through the app into the program if it wasn't working that way as bib says you wouldn't need the app in the middle so you just press a and then a would happen on the thing you could you could use it on your pc when me and bib play um when me and bib play on uh pez i just use this on the pc this is my xbox controller um I would prefer to use a PlayStation controller, but my Xbox One was just too easy to pair, so there we go, job's done. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, when we play our modern Master League, all I do is just use my wireless Xbox controller. Job's good and bosh. Uh, Stadia has been effectively aimed at creating PC games. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's kind of console crossover. That's kind of where it sits when you're using the controller. But you're playing 4K, 1080p, uh, games that's supposed to potentially be coming with the, all the ray tracing stuff uh, that you'd get from playing PC games and so on. Um, so you're effectively playing PC games using a console controller, but yet you can't use it on a PC. It just seems baffling. Yet my console controller I can use on the PC. What? 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 what, what, what the? So it's nice that we have we have wireless there, but my God, it's like it's kind of like. When I say give with one hand, take with the other, it's like mm. it's not even give with one hand. It's more like like distract with one hand while 72 <laughs> two other hands like take things away. Like, look at this over here. Meanwhile, a small group of kids just come out and start taking everything out of your bag kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. You see, this is, this is the, the, my, my roller is my PES 2018 PlayStation 4 controller. 
The only control that I think would beat this is the one that Laz has got, which is that Nakon one, which was absolutely glorious that he won in the ICU Invitational. Oh, he just mentioned that. Actually. I have a go. Well yeah, done. that's what made me think of this one. Uh, using my fantast uh, fantastic award from you guys, my Nakon Pro Controller. That's absolutely amazing. Thank you again, guys. You won it. You earned it. I mean, thank thank you. Baby's kind of making a pip, 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 pip noise. I think there was some sort of network connection. So, like, why is, is it me? I can't tell. <laughs> uh, one second, let me kill my uh, mic. It's like... I don't think I'm rattling. No, I think it's me. I'm When I'm talking, it's kind of like echoing my noise. Like, but, but, is that coming through the stream? Is that coming through the stream? I can't hear it through Discord either. Um, well, do my nothing. But yes, it is. God damn it! I don't even know what that is. Actually, let me say one thing. I did see happen uh, was I just had a an epic notification that Fortnite had just been updated. So maybe it's a network thing. Uh, kill epic. Get out of here. Okay. Test. 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 Okay doesn't appear to be happening now maybe that was it maybe it was a network bandwidth thing <laughs> God. Che <laughs> cheers epic games thank you uh but yes anyway as i was saying you earned that knack on controller so for those of you who don't know we occasionally do invitational tournaments um and we did a series of three invitationals for pro Adventure soccer so we did a 1v1 a 2v2 and a 3v3 uh, and Laza was part of team vernimeter um which made mm -hmm. it all the way to the final and won the final and won one of the uh Star prizes for winning in the final was a Nakon Pro Controller. Shout out to the people at Nakon and Nakon France for sponsoring that stream as well. By the mm. way, those guys gave us the uh, the ability to do that stream and and you know pass out the rewards. So yeah, you earned it. We didn't give it you. You earned it. But thank you for taking part again. Um, I on the other hand don't have my controller uh, uh, of choice. I do have a Pez Steam controller here. I have the uh, 20th anniversary gold one here. Um, I have another one which you can see just about just there from PlayStation FC, uh, which is just another DS4. I have DS4s and Xbox Ones, but I usually play on my scuff, but it's downstairs with my PS4. Um, and don't forget GTA Mega Racing. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sat on one, so not forgetting these these bad boys. Did you did you get the backpack? What do you think of the backpack? How cool is the backpack? I bet you... You, literally... got, the, you got the mouse mat as well, didn't you? Yeah, Matt, it would be a backpack. Was it just a backpack and a mouse mat? I, I thought it was three parts, but it might be. I think so, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the backpack is huge. I, literally, you could you could rent it out to a small family of four kind of thing. Absolutely. <laughs> the space, the space if I remember rightly, it scored an absolute thunder bastard to win the game. Was <laughs> it the one from like 25 yards out on the vault and it dips into the top corner? We'll have to uh, dig, in, dig into the highlights towards the end of the scoop today just so we can relive the moment. Uh, but good morning, Fatman Dave. Um, Hi, Dave. One of, one of our TVs did go while us, when Dad ripped the plug off the cable. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Good morning, Connie. Uh, yeah, I couldn't hear it when you muted. Yeah, it does. It does seem like it stopped now, right? Because I'm not hearing it in my ears now. So I'm guessing it was a, uh, an epic, absolutely eating my PC from the inside out kind of thing. It seems to be okay now, um, for me at least. Let me know if it isn't. Um, morning, Camaldino as well. Another winner. Another winner. Um, morning, Chuke. Hey. Yeah, it's Did you see Camaldino's tweet as you have a last night or this morning that he's modded Pez 6 to make it look like you're playing indoor football? No. He's <laughs> sick. Okay. Uh, we're going on a slight tangent, but it's fine. We're only talking about Sadie's wireless controller. Pez 6 Beach Arena and Futsal. Any... What? <laughs> okay. The mods on Pez 6 are mental, mate. So uh, let's get rid of the discussing now because this isn't a wireless controller uh, so this is a tweet from it's camaldino aka camaldino in the chat pez 6 beach arena and futsal arena uh what else can you get with these uh what else can you get with these patches they're keeping me from boredom look look at that that is badass that is badass oh. it's mad it's mad to believe that 14 years 15 years later nearly this game is still getting updated and people are playing it like i've still got a master league going on my pc pc is obviously the best way to play because we played it on xbox 360 and it was shocking no believe updates. it or not no updates is not good enough you need, you need the full, no. full updates yeah um so playing on pc is still world class there's tons of fantasy arenas for pet six i also i was looking on evo web and i've seen i didn't actually click into the thread but i've seen that someone has said uh 
uh, there is a thread about Pez Six Remastered, and I don't know if yes, it's like, like seen it. I've been on it. What what actually is it? Are they are they fully... so? No, they're not remastering Pez Six. It basically it's all of the Pez Six players, all that timeline from Pez Six is going to be incorporated into Pez Twenty Twenty. So it's oh, going to have oh. the the graphics and everything. But they're trying to make the uh, old scoreboards from like two thousand and five, two thousand and six to go into the game. So it's not going to look like a Pez Six game. It's going to look like watching. Uh, football in 2005 so you're going to have the old sky sports uh back this premier league um tra- transition you're going to have the scoreboards in the top corner you're going to have the ad boards from 2005 2006 on there so it's going to it's just going to use the engine from pez 2020 which for me the pez the pez uh the, the glory days of the playstation 2 engine is still my favorite engine for pro evo anyway so uh, going back to play PES 6, using the graphics and everything from back then is my preferred way of playing it anyway, rather than bringing that into the, the 2020 engine. Yeah, that's that's almost like PES 2020 demastered rather than PES 6 remastered. Um, so yeah, I, I agree. The, the glory days of the PS2 engine. I mean, that's why I say PES 5, because that was the last one I played on PS2. It usually comes mm-hmm. to what was the last one you played on PS2. If, you, if you're stuck in the PES 5 and 6 a bit, not always. I mean, PES 6 on Xbox was decent, but it's, usually it's one or the other. If you uh, play PES 5 on the PS2 last and then play PES 6 on the Xbox 360, quite yeah. often PES 5 was your best game, and that, that, that was my best game, so... Yeah, that's where we're pretty. Uh, Stadia's on wireless controller. Yeah, so for those of you that missed, let's 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 bring it back up so we can uh, jump onto the next item because it's because it's it's not it's it's nice to have, uh, but it's not it's not it's not great. Let's let's admit it. Let's let's be let's be frank and honest. If this if this was um, PlayStation or anyone, we'd be like, yeah, all right, and well, that's just below par because Stadia is so far below par. We kind of going, oh yeah, that's nice. But it's not really. Uh, Google Stadia basically launched back in November with a wireless controller. The wireless controller got got some props. Uh, we have it in the office. We got the founders edition of Stadia, um, and the, the controller is pretty decent. It's it's not ergonomic to the level of like the uh, PS5's Dual Sense or the Xbox controllers. It's, it is a bit like stock sort of shaped, almost kind of like a Mad Cat C uh, controller. But it's not exactly the same because you can feel the weight in it. You can feel the quality of the build. The buttons feel mm. really nice. The sticks feel really nice. So it doesn't have the ergonomics that a PS5, a PS5 or an Xbox One X con- a Series X controllers are going to have. But it, but it is a nice quality controller. Uh, however, you just couldn't use it with anything unless you were using what pretty much came in the box. If you got a Founders Edition, you could use it with your uh, what was it called the uh, the Google Chrome. Yeah, it was, it was the Chromecast Ultra. That's the one. Oh, yeah. Chromecast Ultra, yeah. So if you had the Chromecast Ultra that came with it, you could use it fine, jobs are good. But anything else, it's kind of weak. Now you can use it as long as you run via an app. So they basically have a software connection to connect your hardware to your hardware, which is a, another digital handshake in the middle, which just... It's not It's not what... It's what you'd expect. It's another avenue to go wrong any any extra bit of software could crash if that software crashes the app that you're connecting to the game that you're playing on uh obviously there's there's all sorts of issues that come with that and there's a reason that controllers like the playstation controller like the xbox controller they don't do that and 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 this i think this just is another one to show that stadia are trying to make things work Mm. using a non gaming mindset it's like we can do phones and, and google technology yes all the amazing things we can do Let's throw that at video games. How about you just do it in the video game style? No, 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 no. We know our games and technology, and it's it's almost kind of like a. Excuse me, uh, I'm Google Chrome. I don't I don't think you know who I am. Uh, <laughs> it, it kind of smells of that to me in terms of yeah, it, it'll do the job. You've got there using your your kind of like ignorant. Do you know what, actually? I'll use a football analogy. It's like VAR works stupidly well in rugby, really, really well. So what football decides to do is, uh, football over here, uh, we, we actually have more fans and, and more revenue than rugby, so uh, we, we know how to do VAR. We'll do it ourselves. Mess it up completely. Rugby's like, okay, well, do you know, if you want a hand with it, just just give us a shout. Football's like, no, no, no. It's, we, we've, yeah. we've got it in the bag, mate. mate. Sorted, sorted, mate. Have a cup of cup of choo-choo on me. As, uh, what's he called? Bob Mortimer says, or whatever. He's, uh, he does his... Have a cup of cappuccino on me. Um, you know what? I'm just going to say this. 
the train guy thing isn't funny at all. Oh, I fucking love it, me. I mean, it, no, don't, don't... no, no, it's just, it's just not for me. I don't know why I love Bob Morton, but that oh, the, it's... the train guy thing just, I don't know if it just does it. Sometimes comedy just doesn't, it doesn't resonate with something. People don't like fucking Alan Partridge or Father Ted, you know what I mean? And I love that shit, but the train guy stuff, I don't know. I, it, I just don't find it funny. I oh, see. I, I do, but I also. I, I will. I find it funny, but I've seen it like three times. So maybe after the after the twentieth time, you're probably like, ugh, ugh. Uh, but yeah, have a cup of cappuccino and me. <laughs> yeah, rather. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everyone that's not seeing this is now. What the fuck is Graham having some sort of seizure? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're not sure, just just look for Bob Mortimer, train guy, uh, and he's basically a. Uh, a snooty uh, central London bank kind of guy on the phone. One of those guys that you always see that's just just chatting to the whole whole train carriage. But it's like, mate, you're, yeah. just, you're on the phone with one person. Speak to him, not everyone else. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. So that is it. Stadia is that guy. It's 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 all loud. Yeah, yeah. With it sat there with its cup of cappuccinos. Um, but uh, it's just just ask for a bit of help. Uh, or not even ask just acknowledge the world of video games don't just go into it blindly and make loads of mistakes there's a reason mm. that that uh it's all done other ways and it's because it's successful and you just maybe you just don't want that because it seems like it but anyway 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 uh do you know what like i say it's nice that they are moving forward maybe they will uh find a way around that but if it doesn't have bluetooth i'm not sure how you may just but, uh, best friends. Yep. yeah welcome Crookie, yeah. thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. You're just tuning in. We are we are basically just we don't want to, but we regularly stick the boot in Stadia uh, because we <laughs> we we purchased the Stadia's Founders Edition uh, because we thought, oh, this is cool. It sounds amazing. So we have the Founders Edition in the Ice Cream Studio, uh, which is where Baby's sat right now because it says just below his face Ice Cream Studio there. <laughs> yeah. That's absolutely not Baby's house. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we have the Founders Edition, but it's just. It's just not what we wanted it to be. It's 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 a letdown, and it keeps being a letdown. From what they said it could be, they overpromised from the world of um, uh, on-demand cloud gaming, where you you literally just need a dongle, stick it in your stick it in your hotel TV, and jobs are good, and you can play it on your phone wherever you go. It's amazing, and it just doesn't work that way. Uh, so, like Mike says, the potential for the future is there. It's about trying to learn. Microsoft had issues when they started with console gaming. Yeah, it's it's different though, uh, in that sense. Uh, Microsoft and Sony changed the way gaming is from where it was. Absolutely. But Microsoft and Sony uh, were pushing the boundaries at every time. At every point they made a mistake, they were at the forefront of technology. Uh, whereas Stadia is trying to... They're not even where we are currently. They're trying to mm. add on additional software without getting their foundations in the way. And Microsoft uh, and Sony... Uh, I mean, Microsoft, look at what they're doing now. You compare it, chalk and cheese. Microsoft's xCloud is... is, is light years ahead of uh, Google's cloud services, i.e. Stadia. Microsoft X Cloud, I mean, they, they've nailed it in two words, early access. It's not out, it's a beta, it's early access. You can get, you can play X Cloud now, which runs better, is available in more countries, is available on more devices, and isn't fully out. It's available on all that more than Stadia is, which has been out for six months now. Uh, and that's the thing. Microsoft and Sony are still at the forefront and have done it right. Stadia had the right mindset, and clearly, whatever came from, I think it was like a year ago now, um, mm. when they did their announcement keynote speech. Uh, I remember sat there, stayed late in the office to watch it finish, um, and I was like, "This, this is amazing." Google Stadia are going to change video games. And whatever they had in mind, what, what was going to come in the hardware, didn't actually turn out to be that. Loads and loads of basic things, like even not having not having achievements. What system doesn't have achievements? Uh, Epic. Nintendo Switch. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. But um, you can't expect to be on par with PlayStation, with Xbox, with Steam, uh, and not have basic, basic uh, system things. They didn't even have a store. At the beginning, you had to just kind of like like figure out roughly how to buy games through through the app on your phone. You or, or you couldn't buy them on the browser, but you or some I've no idea. I have no idea. But anyway, anyway, we will we will live in hope that Stadia becomes the thing that we need it to be. Uh, but today, eventually, is not that day. Uh, let's move forward though. 
Next news article, sticking with Kotaku UK, this time written by Luke Plunkett. It says, two publishers trade a bunch of IP, uh, IPs, including Red Faction, like they were Pokemon cards. God damn it. THQ Nordic and Koch Media did something today that I don't think I've ever seen before. They picked up a bunch of intellectual properties they own, including Second Sight and Ryzen. Uh, or is that Risen? Ryzen? Risen? I don't know. Uh, and just traded them like they were athletes or collectible cards or Pokemon. It's important to note before uh, we start thinking this is too weird that these two companies are related. They're both part of the same parent company, which is the Embracer Group itself, formerly known as THQ Nordic. And so this isn't as extreme as, say, Nintendo trading Kirby for Medal of Honor. But it's still interesting. The specifics of the trade involve THQ Nordic giving away Painkiller and Red Faction in return for Koch Media's Sacred, uh, Risen, Ooh. Rush for Berlin, uh, Second Sight, and Singles. Flirt up your life. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Uh, oh, that's a pretty cool graphic. Uh, the Nintendo sort of like Pokemon trading think it's cool it's cool uh, so that to me reads like red faction is worth quite a bit uh and the shuffling of these properties uh some of which have laid dormant for quite some time implies that by moving them around they may be finding a more appropriate home for fresh development or at least re-releases uh that's a, that's that's pretty cool uh, Inch, i like the fact that sacred's been picked back up again because sacred 2 was one of my favorite games on the 360 i absolutely loved it uh, and i didn't actually play the third one um because it came out on the xbox I didn't have a game in PC back then. Uh, I had a PS4. So being able to play another Sacred game again, that was, that was great for me. They're brilliant co-op games as well. Uh, so it's interesting that I could be looking at making a new Sacred one. Uh, I'm sure Ryzen, I think that's how you, how you say it. I'm sure I played that on the PS4. I'm sure it got given away as a PS uh, Plus game. I could be chatting shit, though. <laughs> Ryzen PS4. Uh, Ryzen 3. Yeah, I'm sure this was... Uh, yeah, it came out on PS4. I'm sure I played this because it, it was one of them games that came out on like, PlayStation Plus. Like You just got the free games a month. I'm sure I played it on that. Definitely didn't finish it. Uh, I am discussing now. I never heard from Rush for Berlin. Um, and singles flirt up your life. Jesus Christ. Do we have to put this in like an incognito browser or what? What's going <laughs> to pop up? Oh god, that looks horrific. It looks like a tacky Sims. Do you know what? Let's let's give it a go. Uh, singles flirt up your life video game. Yeah, it, it just looks like a it looks like a clone of the Sims. But I imagine there's a Aww. I imagine there's a little bit more to it. I I have something installed in my browser called Amazon Assistant. Um, so basically, if there's something that I want to buy, uh, it will go, oh, it's on sale today. Um, but what Amazon Assistant does is, is look at what you're searching for as well. So it suggests stuff. So this better not start following me around Amazon. <laughs> Singles float up your life. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, uh, and I imagine that's all of you, like me. Yeah. It's... Look at the state. Look at the state. <laughs> it's like some dodgy like hot coffee patch. For Look at, look at the state of that toilet. Oh, <laughs> forget the uh, smoochie there. Someone needs to get down there with some Dettol. Oh, my God. Uh, for, those, for those of you in the audio podcast services, it is, as Bib says, basically imagine The Sims, but with groping and fondling uh, and unwashed toilets for some bizarre reason. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Whoever got singles flirt up your life, I think you've got the short end of the stick there. Uh, which one was that one? That was a uh, uh, THQ Nordic is picking our uh, painkiller and red faction, and Koch Media are getting rid of Sacred Risen Russia Building Second Sights and uh, Second Sight and Singles Flirt Up Your Life. So Koch Media have have done pretty well there. We'll take Red Faction. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's cool. It's not something I've seen before. Um, as it as it mentions, though, it's probably a news article that only exists uh, because it's two of the same company, essentially. Um, so Koch Media, um, for those of you that don't know, Koch Media own a lot of old THU games. We work with Koch Media, actually. Um, so Koch Media, we they own things like uh, Saints Row, which used to be a THQ game. Uh, Metro used to be, I think, used to be a THQ game. Um, so the companies are very, very closely related. So this probably doesn't even need to be um, a news article. They could have just quietly changed the names. But the fact that, you know, it is, it is something unique. 
Um, yeah, well, I haven't seen anything like this before where they're just trading IPs, even if it is between sister companies. I've, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. But Mike, as Mike just said there, he said Ryzen makes sense swapping, as I believe that the THQ Nordic owner, uh, original, oh, fuck me, THQ Nordic owns the original Ryzen dev. So it would make sense for them to swap that because if the person who's worked on it in its uh, entirety has moved on to another team, bring that game with them and they can redo another one if it, if the demand's there. You just, I mean, I say that if the demand's not there, don't bring out the game because we see that all the time. Like No one cares about most games that get brought out, but they get brought out anyway. No one deserves a sequel like that. Um, and then he's also said, and if I'm not mistaken, Deep Silver owns Red Faction too. Uh, sorry, Deep Silver owned Dev to Red Faction. Um, so in that case, it probably is a good switch. If that again, if that is the case, if uh, those people have switched teams, bring the IPs back to the people who've worked on it for the longest time. Uh, yeah, if there's a demand to bring the games out. So Red Faction is a series of shoot games developed by Volition, uh, and Volition, I believe, were absorbed by Deep Silver. So yeah, that makes sense. That does make sense. Um, essentially, putting the de- uh, the game is back into the hands of the developers. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm fairly sure. I mean, Volition uh, were the company. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, it, I mean, uh, it seems like uh, there you go. DS Volition, Deep Silver Volition. So Volition was purchased by Deep Silver, which is owned by Koch Media. Um, and for those of you that don't know what Volition do, main one you will know uh, is is Saints Row. That's what we've kind of worked with. Um, them. Some real good people at Volition. Um, I've, met, I've met a few, met a few. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Wagwan gents, says Mr. Asim Tanvir, or Tassim Anvir. Yo, Asim. Reputable industry leaker. Good, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, welcome to part one of today's scoop. Uh, we... Uh, doing a double scoop day if you if you're just dropping into the stream we are doing a, a double scoop today we're scooping today and then we're scooping for the xbox watch along at four o'clock this evening rather than yeah, having a scoop tomorrow and covering it then we're going to cover it live today so double scoop day no scoop tomorrow if i remember <laughs> rightly Koch also released the early wwe music cds or at least wwf volumes three and four did they i did not know that it could be the case because we've done quite a few things with Koch. Koch media um have had hands in films so we uh used to work with koch media um on koch media film uh which was basically fit any film that kind of like hits the cinemas and then kind of like flops and goes straight to dvd or just doesn't even hit the cinemas and goes straight for digital release and stuff quite often they have big budgets put into them and they just don't do very well A, a specific example i can give you is a film called red dawn which has thor chris hemsworth in it um, it's on Netflix. It's an okay film, um, but it's a remake of an 80s movie. They put a lot of budget in it. It had Chris Hensworth, uh, the guy that plays Peter from The Hunger Games, so it had quite a big star cast, but it was something along the lines of the soldiers in the film were either Japanese or Korean, um, and whichever one they were, the, the the developers or the studio decided, actually, we don't want to piss off that market. It, I mean, it could be, could be Chinese. I'm, I, I, I can't quite remember, but the studio said, rather than pissing off, let's say it was Japan. Thank you for the ice cream. Hey, ads. Good morning. Thank you for the host. Much appreciated, dude. So, so rather than pissing off Japan, they said, can we just make everyone Korean instead? It won't piss off Japan. Uh, and then all they did was just change all of the Japanese flags in the film, like digi- digitally wash over them and stuff. But everyone is like, you do realize that Japanese people and Korean people don't look exactly the same. People are different they're like it's fine it's fine so it basically it got slated and panned and didn't do very well so it went pretty much straight to d- digital release but Koch media used to uh um buy up films that have potential uh to earn a bit of money but buy them really cheap so they used to like buy the, the rights to red dawn do the digital release earn a shitload of money for it and go yeah we did nothing but we earned the paper so yeah really smart business so it wouldn't surprise me if they did the wwe wwf cds because they've they've done games and film and everything they know how to they know how to make something successful commercially uh and and critically as well uh but yeah there we go there we go so the reason we're talking about that is because Koch Koch media and uh, THQ Nordic, uh, part of the same parent company. I didn't actually know the name, the Embracer Group, uh, which was THQ Nordic initially. Uh, they're both owned by the same company, and they're basically clearing up their portfolios, trading some games. So to go over it again, Painkiller and Red Faction 
uh, went from THQ Nordic to Koch, and in return, Koch sent back Sacred, Risen, Rush for Berlin, Second Sight, and Bibby's new wish listed game, Singles Flirt Up Your Life. There we go. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, usually I joke about I mean, I, I, to, to be fair, we probably you were, I don't think you'd be able to play stuff like that on Switch because uh, your account will probably get seized. Like, uh, can you play Leisure Suit, Leisure Suit, uh, Leisure, Leisure Suit, Larry? I could not even say that, though, <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> Leisure. It's usually me. It's usually me that gets, like, uh, duff mouth like that. Uh, I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can. Um, oh, is Bibby getting his Leisure Suit out now? No, I'm getting my slippers on because my feet are freezing. Oh. Leisure Suit, Larry. <laughs> uh, let's jump back for it. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, we, we have gone through the comments. There we go. Okay. Well, let's move forward. I mean, it's good. It's good to know. It's good to know. We will see if that actually makes anything. I mean, I think the only thing we can really take for that is we could potentially be seeing a new Red Faction game. If if Painkiller and Red Faction have gone that way, uh, you you kind of have to feel that Red Faction is the bigger title there. Um, so so maybe we're gonna see a new. Uh, Red Faction there, possibly, possibly, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, it kind of feels like that would all be based on one game. So, yes, Sacred Risen, Rush for Berlin, Second Sight, and Singles Float of Your Life are going the other way, but is that just to to, to make a, a, a an equal portfolio swap in terms of weight so that uh, Koch Media can start developing on a new Red Faction? Possibly. I think it, all of that, the majority of us so are what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven titles. I think there's only probably only one of those that you can need to pay attention to it's either going to be red faction or risen in my opinion you, you guys might have some uh, different opinions on that but yeah one of those games will be the reason why all that is taking place most likely red faction i'd say but yeah m maybe maybe do you know in the next two years if we see a new red faction pop up on the uh, ps5 and the xbox one x then 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 do you know what that that is the reason why on the 7th of the 5th 2020 we had to look at what Singles flow of your life is. There you go. <laughs> uh, but let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, the next news story, let me just bring on screen for you, is not too surprising, but it's quite surprising at the same time. It's a big old number. So Sharif Saeed, VG247, says, Animal Crossing New Horizons sold about 1 million copies every day for the first 11 days. Woo! So Animal Crossing New Horizons has been a hit for Nintendo, and today we found out just how big. Nintendo published its financials for the full fiscal year ending March 31st. As part of its release, the company revealed new sales milestones for its biggest games. One very interesting detail is that Animal Crossing's New Horizons shipped 11.7 million units in its first 11 days on sale. That figure grew to a massive 13.41 million sold to consumers in the first six weeks. This makes Animal Crossing New Horizons the Switch's best launch ever, beating Pokemon Sword and Shield's 12.9 million, uh, which the games achieved in the first nine weeks on sale. Overall, New Horizons now stands at the Switch's seventh bestseller, but if this moment, uh, momentum continues, it could end up even higher. The Switch's top five best-selling games list looks about the same, just with updated figures. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe uh, reigns supreme with 24.77 million, followed by Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at 18.84, and then both Zelda Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey are tied at 17.41 million, followed closely by Pokemon Sword and Shield at 17.37 million. Damn. I didn't see this coming. Yeah, me neither. Me either. That's purely because not because I don't think it's a good game. It's just because I've never played the game before. I didn't realize what the fan base was like around it. To say that I work in video games and I've been around it pretty much my entire life, I I never even seen an Animal Crossing game. Not that I haven't seen it in the shops, but I mean with my own eyes, someone playing it, and I didn't realize it was this popular. And it sounds stupid saying it now. Look after looking at these figures and. Uh, I don't know if it's just because I'm, I'm more into social media now than I was when the last game came out, but the whole world erupted when that, this Animal Crossing came out, and it caught me off guard because I'm just not interested in the franchise, which is probably why it did catch me off guard. But to say it's outsold Pokemon, that is unbelievable. Yeah, I think I think the um, the obviously pandemic has helped with those sales figures, um, but yeah. 
I can see it selling a lot. I, I wouldn't have said it would have outsold Pokemon at all. I wouldn't have. And I, I mean, even with the hype around it, Pokemon had a lot of hype around it. Obviously, the, the pandemic will have played into that. But we purchased Animal Crossing New Horizons uh, in this house, and it got played for about twenty minutes. <laughs> it just yeah. just didn't re- resonate with us. But but yeah, as Phantom says, morning Phantom. Uh, hashtag Team No Sleep. Uh, Hi mate. Uh, outselling Pokemon is actually nuts. Yeah, c- absolutely, absolutely. Can, uh, can thank Twitch Simps building their female streaming shrines in Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. always, always with the hard hitting facts when Phantom <laughs> rolls it. <laughs> I mean, there is that element too. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I completely get it. Must be good because I see, yeah. I see people uh, across the games industry. Um, who was it? I saw. Uh, uh, Vic- hey, what Elijah Wood on it? Like he was, he, he was trending money because he joined somebody else's Animal Crossing house. Don't know what that means, but he was in there and he was growing someone's sweet corn <laughs> or something like. I don't know. I mean, it's, it it sounds like it's really condescending coming from me because I don't I don't play the game, but yeah, it's it's something along them lines. But it is it's crossed, it's crossed the uh, it's crossed the boundaries of being a cult game to everybody in the world playing it. Do you know what I mean? I remember seeing like was it like Samuel L. Jackson or someone tweeted and like. Like Ice Cube or someone else, and you're just thinking, what, what? Uh, but yeah, I mean, like from the games perspective, even yesterday I saw. So we obviously pick up news articles from wherever the uh, the news sources are, and quite often we feature Eurogamer, and a lot of times the articles are written by Vicky Burke uh, for Eurogamer. Um, and Blake, Blake, there we go, got that eventually. Oops, uh, but she is not a Burke. <laughs> <laughs> but she was uh, tweeting yesterday with. Holly from XPS Access, now CD Projekt Red. And it just yesterday, I mean, that's not the only time. There will probably have been shed loads, but that was the one that I saw selling their turnips or whatever, or shops open, come buy it now. I mean, that I, I get that people are selling things, but having never done it, it just kind of like, what? <laughs> I don't understand it. Yeah. But it's clearly huge because it's everywhere. Um, people are spending a lot of time in it. But, it, but yeah, all right, I knew it was big. I knew it had done well. And, and I knew that because we'd... We'd invested in it and gave it a try. It didn't resonate with us, but we we given it a try. But did I ever, even despite the pandemic, and even despite seeing how far it's gone, and even despite Elijah Wood uh, selling his own crops inside some sort of illegal plantation, which sounds like the uh, s- uh, story for the next Kiddlehood movie or something like that. But uh, yeah, if, even if Elijah Wood and Corey, it, would I have seen it taking over Pokemon? Not in a million years, but that's huge. Um, no. I saw a live DJ playing a set in game. <laughs> what in in Animal Crossing? Like it was. Oh, I'm seeing it. Did, did you see Greg Miller? He made a wrestling ring in there. No. <laughs> yeah, he made a wrestling ring. Oh, let me see if I can find it. It's amazing. Uh, like it was actually an insane set from this DJ. <laughs> Just imagine, <laughs> like proper EDM, something with a donk on it in in Animal Crossing: New Horizons. Uh, lockdown has definitely helped. It, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Imagine if it would have beaten one of. Uh, Fortnite's live events, <laughs> just some <laughs> random DJ like doing his decks inside Animal Crossing. Oh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, it was so good. I like the idea of Animal Crossing, but never spend more than four to five hours before getting kind of bored. However, definitely see the attraction, especially in these times. It's a cutesy second life with bundles of Nintendo charm. It appeals to the mass market for sure. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it probably, probably, if we got through the initial sort of like, like, I'm, I mean, I didn't play it. I didn't play it. Um, it was my better half, but she. D- didn't get through like the start. I'm assuming there's some sort of hand holding start that you've kind of got to get through, and, and it kind of lost her within that. So, yeah, that's that's the downside of those Nintendo charm games. If you don't resonate with the hand holding charm bit at the beginning, then you kind of like ugh. So yeah, we did we we've not progressed. I may try it at some point. I also probably won't. You know what I'm like. I keep saying I may try it, but I'll just play more PUBG because that's what I am. <laughs> uh, Fatman Dave says I always thought it was one of those games that were big in Japan and not really anywhere else. I mean, it has always it has always been pretty big um at events i've always seen um like the the hands-on like boots on the ground community fan uh element around i mean not even just uk events like egx or anywhere where there's a nintendo stand um there's always a big uh, presence and a lot of affection for animal crossing but yeah i it 
it always kind of passed me by. Um, people have been hosting quizzes, arranging parties, and all sorts just because they can't see their mates. So yeah, I've been doing that on Skype. <laughs> we have yeah. a we have a pub quiz every uh, Friday night uh, on Skype, and that's what the beer fridge over there is for. Yeah, um, I'd heard loads about it, but never even thought about playing it. Yeah, that was kind of the same same here. Um, but then we invested and, and then still didn't play. So yeah. Uh, as it's also desirable in the sense that it allows many to live out stuff they probably couldn't do in real life, but are tangible enough to feel uh, like they could, if that makes sense. What, what, like going to the shop? Because, <laughs> because that, yeah, I, I completely agree. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, um, what's it? What's it called? Uh, it, oh God, Gary Witter. Gary Witter's got his own talk show inside Animal Crossing now. Really. Yeah, so he just brings on people just come to his, his. He's built like a set. I'll try and find that as well, but I've just put the link into what Greg Miller's done, okay. which I was absolutely creasing at. If you build it, he will come. If you smell what the rock is cooking. Still gets me hyped up, you know. It still gets me proper pumped up. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> also, <laughs> apologies to all headphone users. You should never apologize for music. <laughs> Oh, that was the loudest music in the world. I apologise. I it was. It was amazing. It was amazing. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm getting psyched all over again. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I turned it on and I just thought, oh, let's just this. This looks. I just see like the uh, the preview, which was the the green grass and the trees. Clicked on it. Hey, yes, man. Like, ah, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> uh... That is genius, though. That that is. I mean. The fact that he's kind of thought—I mean, did does does all of that stuff exist there? Has he built that pixel by pixel? Can you make those rings? The fact that he can get in and then do those sort of like taunts and stuff just look really, really good. I mean, oh, oh. are you okay? I can't show it now, but I will show it soon. I've just had something shipped. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Stuff. Yay! I'll show you when it when it arrives. But. Uh, No other song I'd rather go deaf to. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Nothing beats it. Let's check out this game. I can just listen. I've got, I literally got a playlist of just WWE. I mean, Phantom asked for a new play playlist, and on Twitter I linked into my WWE playlist that I just listen to every now and again. And I have been caught out because on spot on in, in Discord, everyone can see what I'm listening to. It's like, are you listening to the? Are you listening to the Rock's greatest hits? It's just his song four different times. <laughs> it's it's not even that. It's not even that. It's when it's when you see like. The, arguably the greatest wrestler of all time, in my opinion, anyway. It's Shawn Michaels theme tune, and it's like Bibby's listening to "Sexy Boy" by Shawn Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's when that's when Discord does you dirty. Eh? It's just like, wow. <laughs> it's got to be done though, hasn't it? Sometimes you just need to be g'd up, and listening to WWE entrance music kind of does that. <laughs> uh, anyway, sexy boy, let's jump into this uh, tweet that you just shared from Gary Witter. Uh, dress rehearsal for Wednesday's big episode of Animal Talking with guests are Justine. CW Gabriel Tycho, Tycho, blah, 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 and lots of other people. Oh, that is badass! How cool is that? So I think he gets them. I, I think he gets them all in Discord, but then they bring their their character to his set. So he'll do an interview as if he's to, his character's talking to them whilst they're on the set. That is amazing. That's just like, it, like th yeah. this has been picked up by like massive news outlets, like the Late Show kind of thing. But in yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Good effort. Good effort. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, damn it, beat me to it. Uh, in the talk show? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what was it they did the other day as well? I mean, they, they are really good at, at kind of like trying new things like that. But things, and I say they, talk about the kind of funny uh, guys, obviously Gary Witter uh, is involved with those two. Um, but uh, they, they're good at kind of doing their own things, but in a way that resonates outwardly. And there was, mm. what was it the kind of funny friends did? There's uh, one of the kind of funny, basically the kind of funny friends is, is like they, their community essentially. Uh, and um, 
uh, the kind of funny community. There's a guy called Nanobiologist, um, and he did a Disneyland meetup. And I can't remember what game it was on the Xbox 360, but there's basically a Disneyland game where you can walk around Disneyland. Uh, and it was it was cool. So basically, they all met up in this game, walked around Disneyland, and then when they went, oh, shall we shall we go on um, Scare Mountain or whatever it's called, can't remember. Space Mountain. Space let's, Mountain. Let's, let's, let's go on, let's go on Space Mountain. So they all go up to Space Mountain and then all loaded up a first person view of going around Space Mountain. That's cool. <laughs> so they're walking around this thing and then they all sit there like VR, like Aah! and then get off and then then they go to. Uh, Whatever the next ride is, that's, that's yeah, that's good. That's good. I, I love, I love how they kind of like push the boundaries in that sort of sense. If you ain't, if you ain't moving forward, you're standing still. Yeah, man. Uh, also, the rock's music hitting. Uh, then also, I had me almost had me people's elbow in the dog. <laughs> <laughs> we have, we have a, an ongoing joke in turn, like in this house where, um, say if I go in to wake my daughter up or something naturally like any caring dad i elbow drop her because why not why not that's what that's what, that's what i do um but it's because we were, we were play wrestling a few years ago and she misnamed the people's elbow she called it the family elbow <laughs> <laughs> so I, so every every day i go in and she's in bed i'm like family elbow <laughs> so yeah that's, that's, oh god that's what you do <laughs> Anyway, enough of the insight into the. Uh, right, we got one more news story, I think. <laughs> we do, we do. Family elbow. Uh, take the discussing now. I stream. Uh, I love Nikki Cross's entrance from when she was with Sanity. Yo, says Alex. Good morning. Another one I listen to every now and then is Dude Loves Theme. Dude Loves. Ha ha ha. Just comes out. Peace signs. I did actually watch a cracking documentary two nights ago on the WWE Network, and it was. Um, Triple H and uh, Mick Foley and their two matches that they had. It was like an hour long. It was class. I if you've got it. the WWE Network, then you, you, you're missing out on so many documentaries if you're not if you've not signed up to it. I love they Mick are world class. love Mick Foley. Cactus Jack, that's the one for me. I love him. I love Cactus Jack. Uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. Back, back, back to the news. Back to the news. Written by Sharif Saeed for VG247. He is Cross-gen games this year will offer free upgrades to the PS5 and Xbox Series X. So EA has revealed that owners of its games will be able to upgrade to the PS5 and Xbox Series X versions for free. As part of EA's earnings call for the quarter four of its fiscal year 2020, the publisher confirmed that its cross-gen games launching this year can be upgraded for free to work on the PS5 and Xbox Series X. EA's COO Blake Jorgensen pointed out that EA recognised the impact of this on its revenue for fiscal year 2021, but that it shouldn't affect net sales for the full year. Note that this year, the phasing includes the effective re revenue recognition from the games we are launching for the current generation of consoles that can also be upgraded for the next generation. We've made a preliminary estimate of that impact in the phasing, but it should be noted that this will not affect the net bookings for the full year, nor cash flow, just the timing of recognition, Jorgensen told investors. Uh, Jorgensen didn't elaborate further as to how this upgrade scheme is going to work or what games it will support it, uh, but Microsoft has, of course, already confirmed that all of its first-party games will benefit from the smart delivery feature, which enables players to buy the game once and get the appropriate version for their console. Third-party studios such as CD Projekt Red are taking advantage of this with Cyberpunk 2077, but the decision is ultimate, ultimately up to the publishers. Sony has yet to make a similar commitment, but Jorgensen's comments seem to suggest that PS5 won't be so, from, uh, so different from Xbox Series X in that regard, unless, of course, the executive is simply referring to backwards compatibility, which will enable owners of, say, FIFA 21, a cross-gen game, to play the PS4 and Xbox One version on PS5 and Xbox Series X. Uh, good move. Very good news. Uh, a very good move. Uh, it's, I didn't. I didn't. Did you, expect, did you expect it from EA? Uh, well, I was going to say I didn't expect any different. Um, I expected them to do it, but because they had to. Uh, now CD Projekt Red are out there saying, "You buy um, Cyberpunk on this gen, you'll get it on the next gen. You'll get all the upgrades and everything. We don't believe you should buy a game more than once for the platform of choice. If you buy it on the Xbox ecosystem, you'll get it on the next one free." Uh, which is a huge, huge soundbite. And that is akin to Sony saying to Microsoft, um, what, you have to buy you have to buy your your games 
if you're like if you're giving your game to your friend, they have to buy it. You can't just trade games. This is the message that they had in the last gen, um, mm. and and that was a, a, such a tiny thing, but such a huge pivotal point in the marketing scenarios. Xbox had DRM, digital rights management. Basically, if you buy the game digitally um, or even physically, if you have a physical game, you can't give it to your friend without them paying to activate it on their console. Even though you've purchased it and given it to them, they can't. Um, run it that way and they got a lot of stick with it in that sort of way so if EA had have said on this one actually uh, yeah you have to buy it on both formats that's that's kind of like being the Microsoft in, in that situation uh, and, and Cyberpunk would be the Playstation in the fact that Cyberpunk are giving you the free upgrades but EA would get no you have, to, you have to pay for it you have to pay for it so yeah I, I, I expected this uh, but now I'm finally seeing it it makes me happy but um, I mean part of me the Obviously, the bit inside me is going to say, going, yeah, but are they doing this because they want to or are they doing this because they have to? Because the key thing there was a paragraph that, for a, a non financy pleb like me, kind of washed over me. Uh, I'll read over it again just so that we can all glaze over and look into the distance, uh, contemplating our futures and not listen to it whatsoever. But it says, Note that this year, the phasing includes the effect of revenue recognition from the games that we are launching for the current generation of consoles that can also be upgraded free for the next generation. We've made a preliminary estimate of that impact in the phasing, but it should be noted that this will not affect net bookings for the full year, nor cash flow, just the timing of recognition, uh, Jorgensen told investors. So that was the paragraph. That's, that's word salad of saying... This is going to cost uh, money, maybe not now, but will um, kind of forward. He, he says he doesn't think it will impact on the cash flow, um, just the time of the recognition, a.k.a. people will all buy the game for the next generation, but they'll buy it now. Um, mm. That I, th I believe that's kind of what he's saying. So they'll buy it now and they'll take it with them. So all the people that would have bought it for the next generation... Are buying, yeah. are buying, so they're going to get more sales essentially now, which will balance out. It's kind of what he's saying. It's it's a lot of wishy washy way of saying, okay, in an ideal world, we'd probably sell both of them, but we can't really do that. So, so yeah, yeah so they're basically they're not going to be bringing out a PlayStation Five version of the likes of FIFA. Rather, they're just going to bring out a PlayStation Four version that will work in your PlayStation Five. Uh, or am I getting that wrong? Because that's I, what he feels like when I'm, when I'm, when that's been being read and I've read it. That's what it feels like. They're not going to make two different <clears throat> versions of the game because if it works, then why would they make two different versions? I I imagine that they probably will because this was a conversation that that was happening around Cyberpunk. Um, I think they'll probably kind of be the same thing. So if you get the PS4 disc uh, and you put it into your PS4, you'll get the PS4 textures and so on. You get the PS4 disc and you put it into your PS5, then you, the game will probably go, okay, you need to do a 70 gig download while it downloads all the ray tracing textures and so on. So you essentially have, it runs off the base, code, or it just activates and tells the PS Store, mm. actually, you can download the full game uh, for the PS5. Um, but if you go into a store and you are Johnny Random on the street uh, and you've bought a PS5 uh, and you see PS4 version of FIFA, you're going to be like, well, I, I don't want that. I've just got rid of my PS4. I'm on a PS5, so I can't. Where's, where's the PS5 version? So I reckon they will have PS5 versions as well. They probably mm -hmm. won't have as many in circulation, but you will. Uh, you'll. I imagine you'll get it in in the different packs. So just like the PS3 cases of your games are different from the PS4 yeah. cases of your games, you'll you'll get the small blue PS5 version of the case or whatever it's going to be. Um, so do you reckon that you'll be able to play against your mates who are still playing on a PlayStation 4 version of the game? Good question. Good. Question. That's what makes me think that it's probably not. Because uh, why would it? Because that means if one if one of your friends ends up upgrading, if you want to play with them, you would have to as well. But if the game's exactly the same, it's just on a PlayStation Five disc with a different bit of code to play on your PlayStation Five, then that makes the PS4 version irrelevant, even though you're playing it on a PlayStation Five. I imagine that you will have both scenarios. Some games will be like, okay, you can play cross gen, just it's just another version of cross platform. Whereas I imagine there will also be some games that are like, no, nah, you have to play it. You can play uh, cross-platform, um, but you can't mm -hmm. play cross-gen. Uh, and and some may even do it the other way. Oh, you can play cross-gen, but not cross-platform or whatever. So, uh, mm. I, yeah, I imagine some will take it, some won't. The likes of Fortnite, I've full-on yeah. seen. Okay, well, they're going to have it working cross-gen and cross-platform. You on your Xbox mm. One X could play Bibi on his PS5. Uh and you could party up in that way, and jobs are good. And I imagine that yeah. will be the case. Some games will, some won't. I think, it, I think longer tail, uh, 
the more time comes out, then yeah, you probably will get it. But also, the more time comes out, the more uh, irrelevant the PS4 and so uh, becomes. Um, so yeah, within a year, two years, you probably start to see that's when obviously all PS4 inclusion starts to get phased out anyway. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's good though. It is good. Uh, GG's to EA because they could have easily gone. Do you know what? Um, Sod uh, CD Projekt and their their plans of having their uh, free upgrades and and Sod Xbox with their smart um, what was it called smart 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 delivery smart delivery yeah um, Sod them both we still want to make our money uh, and they could have done that and they could have released FIFA for the P- uh, for the PS4 and for the PS5 just like they did for the PS3 and the PS4 the FIFA 2014 version that came out it was like fifty quid on the PS. Four, yeah. um, and loads of people had to buy it for the second time. Loads of people did buy it for the second time. Um, wasn't worth it. It was it was a good game, but it wasn't like a big step up or anything. Um, but they made money on on the back of the new consoles, and they could have done that again. It probably it wouldn't have earned them further, but but by not doing that, do you know what? GGs have taken it on. And the the worst thing from EA's perspective is they are absorbing some some profit loss there. But yeah, but they won't get the credit for it because people like to hate EA um, for 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 many reasons, some justified. Mm. Uh, but yeah, for that, it's just kind of like, well, well, you we expect it. It's what, it's what other people said. But the first year loss that they're going to end up inevitably taking because of the two different SKUs that they're going to be bringing out will inevitably get overshadowed um, by the bundles that are going to be coming out the next year. Because if you look at the bundles that they could possibly have. If they bring out a new Dragon Age, they've got one there. If they bring out a new Mass Effect, they've got one there. Uh, if they've got uh, a new FIFA, Madden, NHL, they've all got ones there. And as well as a Battlefield. So if they was to bundle those games in with the new console, then the the profit margins will inevitably get smaller and smaller. And then he, he, in on there, oh, it will get larger and larger in the long run. But in the short time, the, obviously the margins may be a little bit smaller because of the multiple SKUs that they're going to have to put out. Yeah, I, I agree with... I agree with that. I mean, what what Mike's saying in the chat as well, they will make it back through microtransactions. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, that's inevitable. And that's, you kind of have to believe in your products and your audience and, and your ability to create a game that people desire just has, uh, had, uh, as um, Activision has. So Activision, we were spoken about it previously, that their switch to the Battle Pass mechanic in Call of Duty games Um has replaced the need for standalone DLCs and and uh, and different season passes. Well, you you spend fifty quid at the start of the year and you'll get access to DLC one, two, and three for a reduced price of forty quid, fifty quid rather than seventy five quid. If it would be if you buy them all individually and so on. Um, people committing to a season pass uh, rather than a battle pass sort of mechanic means that you're spending a large sum of money up front for a game that you might not have the interest in come come the end of the year. The game might just be <coughs> might just be shit. Um, once again, I mean, and it, reference to EA because I mention it all the time. Star Wars Battlefront Two, I essentially I bought the deluxe edition of Battlefront Two uh, because I mm. expected to be playing it for a long, long time. I didn't at all, so I kind of lost out. Um, uh, but that's, I mean, it's slightly different because that was a deluxe edition rather than the normal edition, and then a season pass. Um, if they'd have had like Call of Duty does now, where, where the the game comes out and then you can buy. Do you want? Do you want to get all these cosmetics that you can work towards and give you some in, in-game goals to try and achieve? Well, then buy the battle pass for eight quid. Jobs are good. It's like oh, eight quid's an average. That's like a couple of happy meals. And McDonald's is even open, so I've got loads of happy meal money just sat there. The happy meal fund's growing, mate. So yeah, cost mm. Spend eight quid. Um, so yeah, they they absolutely can make it back through microtransactions. Um, and pff, well, EA's games absolutely will do, won't they? Especially with the likes of the Maddens and the. Uh, uh, the FIFA Ultimate Teams and so on that they, they will no doubt have to lose <clears throat> yes they, 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 they will they make money yes will they make more than enough money yes um, however um, something like that will still be a drop could uh, could still be a loss but if you keep the interest going across two different uh, consoles then you're keeping people hooked the game comes out in August September people buy <clears throat> FIFA they will invest yeah. a lot of money into it by the time you get to Christmas, there's a natural sort of uh, downward curve for football games. Yes, the games sell a lot at Christmas mm-hmm. because families buy them for the kids. But by the time you get to January-ish time, FIFA starts to drop off, uh, as does Pez. Football games start to... I mean, they still dominate the charts as FIFA's back at the top of the charts this week. But compared to the launch week, they're selling less. You get a PS5 and, a, and an Xbox 
uh, Series X launching there, then that spike will go back up again. So yeah, 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 exactly. They will, they will, they will earn the money. Um, they, they, they could be potentially targeting a loss, but like it says, it shouldn't affect net sales for the full year. Yeah. At the end of the full year, it should balance out. Um, and do you know what? If, if the net sales are going to balance out, then then it's it's the better thing that they can do from from their perspective as a company that that could do with a little bit of um, customer centric uh, PR. Uh, spin. I mean, they 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 are a company that's seen as um, cash focused, obviously, because all big companies do get seen as that. So they could do with a nice yeah. little bit of PR spin. So if it's going to balance for them, then they might as well take this route and have a bit of good PR around it as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there we go. There we go. Uh, it was in the newspaper last year about EA that FIFA Ultimate Teams accounts uh, for twenty five percent of the company. That doesn't surprise record. me. I imagine Madden isn't far back behind that as well. Yeah, I mean, it, it's huge, it's huge. Uh, that sort of in-game mentality. If you've got a game that's at the crest of a wave, in-game currency is huge. Like, what was it Fortnite was earning? It, it was like, I don't know if it was like a million pounds. Or was it like a million pounds a, a, a day or an hour or something? Whatever it was, I can't remember what number it was. It was, it, maybe it was four, I don't know. It was earning a stupid amount of money every single day every day it was earning more than most games will earn in their entire entire lifespan uh so yeah it doesn't surprise me it doesn't surprise me and that's a free game as well uh, uh 1k fifa pack opening incoming 1k this is nx pvp if it's not <laughs> if, if it's not 17k he's not doing it he's not doing it this guy only goes all in uh not played fortnite in ages Ah, but you have about 50 grams worth of skins sat there so who's the real winner yes yes <laughs> Excited for the in, Inside Xbox conference today. We are. We will be covering that. And we're going to wrap things up here. So this is a double mm-hmm. scoop day for the first time ever. We usually do the scoop around 10 a.m.-ish uh, each and every single weekday. But tomorrow, being a bank holiday, um, would have just been about the Inside Xbox conference tonight anyway. So we've decided to move uh, tomorrow's scoop forward. So 4 p.m. this evening, we will be having a live watch along on the channel. Me and Bib and you guys all watching it together. Yay! Yeah. yeah. Um, so feel free to to drop in, like I said, four p.m. Uh, this evening. Uh, we'll uh, watch through the watch along. It's only the first one as well. EA, not EA. Microsoft have said that this isn't going to be like their E three conference. This is the first of a series of monthly conferences. So this is the May one. There'll be another one next month, which is June, which is when E three is supposed to be. So you can probably expect bigger things next month, and then. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, following, uh, did they ha- actually commit to a set number? I have the number seven in mind. Like they've committed to seven conferences, but I could be completely wrong with that. So if I am, maybe. yeah, I think it's just sort of one every month until launch. Ah, there you go. Um, so yeah, number a number of con- uh, conferences, but we will be we'll, we'll be covering it tonight. Well, I say we will. I mean, I'm just going to sit there. Bib's Bib's got his plans. He's he's, he's going full on game show host. He's got like an open collar, <laughs> white blazer. Yeah, he's going to He's going to have a uh, full on. Not even side parting, he's going centre parting on his hair. He doesn't, his hair doesn't even do centre parting, but he's doing it anyway. Do you know, slick do you know, <laughs> drought <yeah>? shrew. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we we are excited for it, uh, Griff. Uh, thank you for joining as well, by the way. Uh, we are excited, uh, excited for it, and we will be covering it live. So if you're not doing anything at four o'clock tonight, just 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 pop us on the TV while you're having you're uh, having your brew. You've, you've done a hard day's work, you know, homeschooling or whatever it is that you've been doing. I'm only saying that because that's what's relative to me. I mean, you might <laughs> you might just be. Uh, like bib bottom bottom of a bottle of rosé by 4 p.m so oh dead right (laughs) uh but yeah we absolutely will be covering it but we're gonna disappear for now uh go get yourself some dinner have yourself a nice little mooch in the sun it's quite nice and sunny in this part of manchester and then pop back a little bit later on as we get inside xbox yeah 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 deal yeah deal sweet sweet um, as mentioned, obviously, we won't have a scoop tomorrow. Some, tonight's edition of the scoop is the last one for the week, so we're moving tomorrow's forward to later on today. So don't expect us to be around tomorrow, especially not Bib, because he's going to be, you know, breathing rosé at 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can't go near an open flame. Uh, so, yes, make sure you have your notifications turned on. Follow the channel now and have your notifications turned on, and then you get notified when we go live a little bit later on. But before we disappear, Biberino, Mm-hmm. Is there anything that you would like to add? Yes, two things. One, Mike. Uh, yes, Pez will work on a laptop if the laptop's good enough. I mean, you could put it on, put it on low settings, and it may still work. I don't think it's that demanding, but to have the best experience, you just whack it on high, put all the mods in, 
you're good to go. The second thing is obviously if you do see any video game news that you want to, uh, you know, potentially have featured on this show, then do feel free to hit us up on our Discord. I've seen that Mike did that yesterday. Uh, and yeah. yeah, on Twitter as well, we've got to be in your at Graham underscore day. And of course, at Ice Cream Uploads, we'll take your thoughts and impressions and give our thoughts and impressions on the uh, next show, which I think is Monday now, Graham. Well, apart from the 4 p.m. today, but yes, back to Monday then yeah. after that. So, yep. Yeah. Today and then back to Monday, 10 a.m. ish, 10 a.m. ish, 10 a.m. ish. Uh, no, no, come in, no, come in. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. every month uh, we'll now have Xbox News part of it. Exactly, exactly. And beers for the day get smashed. Yeah, I will tune in. It's, an, it's a nice day in Hull today. Uh, I'll be in the garden. Nice. Well, do you know what? Looking forward to seeing you in the garden. Uh, well, we can't actually see you, but you get what I'm saying. Get what I'm saying. Anyway, have yourselves a lovely day, ladies and gentlemen. If you are subscribed to Ice Cream Uploads on Twitch, you get access to our exclusive emotes. And if you are here, please use the blue one in chat. There we go. Like Bib just did. Have yourselves a lovely day. And in true ice cream fashion, stay frosty. Stay frosty. <laughs>